At its core, games are about expression. Who we are, the race we choose, the class we play to the gear we wear. It all serves to express ourselves in the games we play. All games these days sport an array of customizations that allow us to differentiate ourselves from those who play alongside us. Mods in games like Cyberpunk or Skyrim serve to allow for even more customization just so the players can look and feel even more unique. This isn't by accident either. As humans, we are constantly aware of how others perceive us because we are constantly aware of how we see others. It is what is known as the spotlight effect. The clothes we wear, our hairstyles, the tattoos we put on our bodies, it all serves to strengthen the image we have of ourselves and to broadcast that image to the rest of the world. Video games seek to capture the spotlight effect and merge it with our endless potential for creativity, to allow us the freedom to express ourselves in whichever way we choose, without restriction, beyond that which would break our immersion. This is a careful balancing act, but when done right, can lead to some truly magnificent gameplay and hours of fun for those who take part in it. Even those who choose not to partake are actively partaking. Their image is of one who doesn't care, of one who wishes to be viewed as a rebel, but ultimately, they are still part of the masses. They just wish for the masses to not think that they are part of it. Speaking of being part of something, if you wish to be part of this group of amazing people on your screen right now, then consider becoming a patron today or join us over on Twitch for more of my mad rambling. Hit the like button too if you really wish to be cool. In recent years, World of Warcraft has done a phenomenal job of giving players more freedom to express themselves. From allied races to class customization options such as hairstyle and skin tones, players have more freedom in WoW than ever before to really create their champion in World of Warcraft. If only the story would actually allow us to feel like the champion, that'd be great. Alas, we will always be the champion that runs useless errands like picking flowers and collecting bear asses, but this is neither here nor there. One major flaw in World of Warcraft remains, however. Housing. Of the major MMOs, ESO, Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2, and Star Wars The Old Republic, World of Warcraft is the only MMO without housing. A feature that in many of these games have led to massive sustained success is still a feature that World of Warcraft has yet to even attempt. Oh, but uh, Akalon, I hear you say, they did try it. Garrisons was a major failure. Why would anyone want housing following Garrisons? Well, my little flower child, if Garrisons is indeed the attempt well made for housing, then it is by far the worst attempt at housing in any game ever. That might be a little bit hyperbolic, but you get the idea. Housing in all other MMOs is a non-invasive feature. It adds no player power, it isn't mandatory, and it does not tie the player up with endless activities that seek to keep players from the outside world. If anything, it is used to get players into the world, running dungeons, looking for furniture, seeking out crafters for the drapes they have had their eye on for such a long time. Housing ties much of the world into it, giving players reasons to venture outside the walls of comfort in search of the divine. In Final Fantasy XIV, housing have sparked a whole new way to play the game. There are websites with venues and timetables that will tell people when the next club night is taking place. Clubs feature live music, photographers, and dancers. People work at these clubs as part of their RPG fantasy, and they make friends in the process, making their own content, even in between patches. Alas, there is genuinely no player as inventive and, well, basically unreliant on patch content than our peers. There is also the darker, naughtier side of housing NF14, but I will leave you to your imagination on this one. The point is, 
If games are about creative expression, then housing is the ultimate conduit thereof. The ability to make a space within the game world your own is something that players adore. To customize it to whatever your fantasy home in WoW would look like can provide players with so many more reasons to play the game. Imagine if you had a trophy area displaying all your best achievements in WoW, maybe a few crafting tables that make you feel like an artisan that can invite your friends over to craft away and make some cool armors. Imagine if you could host a great feast for you and your friends after your raid expedition. I mean, there really is no end to what players would imagine, given the option. Um, Akalon, I hear you say once more, Ian already spoke about this. He already explained that they would love to do housing, but unfortunately, in order to pull it off, they would have to do it right. And this would almost certainly mean losing a raid tier or a dungeon just to get it done. And I am certainly not okay with losing a raid tier just so some people can have a home. To you, I would say... Bullshit. What if I told you you could have housing without losing anything else in the process? Yes, housing is an incredible commitment. It would certainly take many months, if not years, to complete. If you try to do housing as part of an expansion feature, you will absolutely have to give up some features like raiding or a dungeon or maybe even a class. Housing, however, isn't an expansion feature. It is a game feature. It's a persistent part of the game that exists completely parallel to whichever expansion is the current one. This means you must look at it as a completely new problem to solve. In one of the recent Final Fantasy XIV produced the live letters, Yoshi P announced the complete overall of graphics in Final Fantasy XIV from the ground up. All cities, all zones, all classes and NPCs will receive major updates to the look and art style. The way they approach this is incrementally. Every patch, they will update specific zones and cities until finally it is all done. How does one eat an elephant? Bite by bite. To achieve housing in World of Warcraft, you need a roadmap. Slowly, over time, you have a single team of developers put together the system. This may take two, maybe even three expansions, but in this way, you are not taking away from the individual expansion development. You are also not rushing it. You give these devs the time they need to do it perfect. You include the player base in this roadmap, tell them it is coming and that you are working on it, and then allow the team to test what players may like or dislike. Eventually, maybe even have a housing beta where players get to test the system and give feedback. And then, once it is ready, you roll it out to the players. Constantly, Ian and the team at Blizzard looks at World of Warcraft in these limited two-year windows, where nothing can be attempted unless it can be done within two years. But MMOs aren't just expansions or patches. They are breathing worlds that should exist as persistent, ever-changing realities. Not every feature for World of Warcraft should be made in two years or less. Sometimes you can have different roadmaps for different aspects of the game. For a long time now, me and many others have complained about how the new world constantly replaces the old. How the old world is forgotten in favor of new, shiny things. In 925, Blizzard finally remembered they have a host of old dungeons that can absolutely serve as content for the player base. This means they are finally starting to realize that not everything needs to be discarded as soon as it is old. Sometimes old things can still have a place in the game. Now, it's time for Blizzard to fully embrace World of Warcraft and all of its expansions. To be clear, I have never nor will I ever have a house in an MMO. I do not personally care for the system. I can live without it. But I also understand that there is an entire community out there who would absolutely jump at this opportunity. 
to be able to express themselves in a personal space within a world they love. If FF14 can update all their graphics in the game, ever, then World of Warcraft can and should have housing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button if you agree with me or even if you just enjoyed the video. In which case, hit the like button for Alex because he's the guy that makes these videos really pop. To all of the patrons, Twitch subs and YouTube members, thank you so much for your support. If you wish to see more exclusive content including podcasts, behind the scenes writing sessions and more, join us over on Patreon. As always, ladies and gentlemen, be kind to each other, be good to each other, and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace out, fam. It is what... No. We will always be the champion that runs useless errands like plick, picking flowers. Blah, 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 blah. Fuck. That, that sentence makes no sense. A feature that in many of these games have led to massive sustained success is still a feature. Oh, never mind. I've, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. To customize it to whatever your fantasy home and what. <laughs> if you try to do housing as part of an expansion feature, you will almost absolute. Now, what the fuck is that saying? It is a game feature. Fe <laughs> For a long time now, me and many others have complained about how new. Little. <laughs>